it is estimated that the biggest percentage of Uganda's economy depends on consumption-based value chains, which translate into taxes that the country relies on to fund its budget. Most Ugandans today stayed home, especially those outside where the president in his directives last called essential services as he ordered a 7 p.m. curfew, ordered non-agricultural businesses closed, and banned the use of private cars. This means that with no movement of people in private cars, goods will get to the markets but will find no buyers, thus limiting the exchange of money between suppliers, traders and consumers who determine the shape of the economy. Some of the experts we spoke to shared their views on how a two weeks total lockdown will affect the economy shrouded in colossal foreign and domestic debts. Uganda is largely a trading nation. 75% of the GDP is through consumption and about 25% is investment. So the moment you have a lockdown, that means traders are not trading, manufacturers, most of them are not manufacturing, buyers are not going to the market to buy, then in effect you have a very difficult situation for the economy. What worries me is um, if incomes are lost immediately, then there's going to be a hit on demand for goods and services. Banks are already struggling with unpaid loans. They are going to have a problem giving more loans to people who already have unpaid loans. Because if people are not working, banks are not making money, and banks, you are going to see a recession, an economic downturn, unexpected in this, in this century. The government plans to effect a 14-day, 7 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. curfew as a way of reducing movement. Anybody would imagine that there will be heightened security, but analysts say this will come with hurdles. The challenge is once locked at your home, and you don't have what to eat, then you'll think about the neighbor who probably you think has. And you are going to see thuggery, you are going to see you know, people you know, attacking others on the street. Although government plans to distribute food to the poor, there has been no plan on how it will be done and by who. Economists are saying this is not sustainable and are suggesting some of the ways the economy can recover from the shackles of the COVID-19 which has devastated the entire global economies. Are you going to close some administrative centers? Something which some politicians have been talking about. Are you going to reduce on the consumption of government? Are you going to cut some, some activities? And like I've said, and I'm not shy to say this, there are things at this point which make no sense. Things like elections. We want an environment post-COVID um, where the key sectors of the economy are involved in key decision making. And that's why I'm thinking that even the budget framework paper, even whatever proposals are on the table in terms of the budget, which in theory is two and a half months from now, should actually be re-looked at again. For example, upstream oil and gas sector has gone down because of the price war. And it's very unlikely that those oil companies are going to make an FID right now. So all that money you had allocated into that development can now move into sectors where it's needed, like health. Then you can use your prerogative as a government now to offer the necessary guarantees for investment to happen faster in the health sector, to build the capacity in terms of ventilators, respirators, regents, Experts are saying that it might be hard for government to avail all the essentials to the every person who is in dire need of them, especially during this lockdown. Therefore, they are advising those who have to share with those that do not have. They are also suggesting that this lockdown might bite harder after like eight days as people wait upon government to see what next after the lockdown. Sudilbi Arhanga, NTV.